Okay, I want to get this done, so we're just going to roll with the lighting. I'm sorry if it's like horrible or bad, but I want to get this done. <laughs> um, so all the books that I read in February. I read nine books in February. I DNF'd one. And in total, I read 3,242 pages. I'm going to go in order of how I read them. And I'm going to tell you what prompt they fulfilled for my TBR legacy, if they fulfilled the prompt, and my thoughts and star rating on everything. So the first book that I read and finished in February was Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I don't want to say too much about this because I will be having a full review on this coming next week. It got a four star from me. There was something that was a little problematic in this book for me personally but other than that I really like this one didn't like it quite as much as Scarred by Emily McIntyre which is the second one in this series they are a series of standalones there's no intertwining between any of the characters any of the books nothing they are all complete standalones so if you want to read any of these I would highly recommend you just pick whatever one you want and read them I will be continuing on in this series however I'm not sure if I want to purchase the physical copies or if I want to get an ebook copy of them somehow but I gave this one four stars it was really good this one was on my February TBR legacy for the next one in a series so that's great for me that I'm continuously ticking these off of my series the next book that I finished was actually a reread and this was Jock Row by Sarah Nye and again it was five stars. I absolutely loved this book. I got it as an interlayer library loan. I am rereading some of my favorite five star books to see if they are still five stars. Look out for that video coming in like a month or two but I again this one's five stars. There's not much I can tell you about it. It's the first in a series. We follow Scarlett and Rowdy Wade and they meet at a baseball party and on Jock Row and she is kicked out of this party and they have this little connection and the one thing that I love about Sarah and I and it was so true rereading this one is that it's very natural her progressions in the story. There's you know that little twinge of I like this person I want to see where this goes and there's also just it's very smooth and fluid and there's no third act conflict in this one which I absolutely loved this one was not on my TBR for the month this one just came in as an interlibrary loan and I'm really glad that I read it next we have an audiobook and this one is the only one left by Riley Sager my hold came through from my library and I decided to listen to this one which actually was really great I enjoyed this one immensely I gave this one four stars um not sure why it really didn't get five stars it could be possibly that I did kind of put something together I figured it out but I did figure out something about halfway through Although it was a really good mystery thriller, I am kind of going into that era, I guess you could say. This year I have just been feeling that type of mood and really enjoying the books that I have been picking up so far in this mystery thriller horror genre that I have been kind of slowly getting into. But in this one it is a thriller. We follow Kit and Lenora. Kit is a live-in home health aide. She comes in, she takes care of people who are like a little too sick or like on their deathbed and family just wants them to be at home. So she takes care of these people. She has been put on probation for something that happened about six months ago and she is given this job that nobody else wants and this is to take care of Lenora Hope who supposedly killed her sister and her two parents for some reason. 
and we find this out through Kit's story, through Lenora's story, and Lenora can actually communicate somewhat even though she's had several strokes. Like I said, I really like this one. This one definitely had very a lot of atmosphere. Uh, this one is set in Maine on the ocean side, and you can very heavily feel that atmosphere that Riley Sager gives you in this book. The house does, definitely has its own atmosphere, its own entity, not in like a scary way, but it's definitely present in this book that the house is just it's there and everybody is you're suspicious of everybody obviously this is a mystery book and I really like this one the hype is definitely real for this one if you want to check this one out if you've liked a couple of other Riley Sager books I would highly suggest it um, I know he's a very hit or miss author with people but I truly enjoyed this one this is I think it's only like my second Riley Sager that I've ever listened to. This one and Home Before Dark are the ones that I've listened to. I really enjoyed them. If you want to check out the audiobook, I would highly recommend that. That's how I consumed it. Although I wouldn't be opposed to possibly picking up, like physically reading these now. So because they're not really that scary. It's not like a thriller. It's more of a mystery that I'm into. So we're going to go with the mystery on this one that I really like. In February, I really, I know it's the, the month of love, but I just, I could not get behind all the romance that was on my TBR. And I just, I couldn't, I could not, I needed to break. And it, I'm hoping to kind of keep up this momentum of, you know, sprinkling in the random like mystery thriller along with, you know, more fantasy. February did not have any fantasy at all. It definitely needs some more fantasy in my life and I'm getting that right now. Because it's sitting right here, we're going to talk about the book that I DNF'd. This is A Lot Like Love by Julie James. I got about... 50 pages into this one and I absolutely hated the male character the lead male character I hated him he was just a jerk and he wasn't a jerk like hook is a jerk J hook is just a jerk because it's hook and like I said he's just a jerk for me for no reason it's not even like he's a jerk because he's from the mafia or he's this morally gray character that you know going into the book that he's morally gray in this one he's just flat out a jerk and I was just like I don't care I don't want to listen I was listening to it I'm like I don't want to listen for however many more hours to this guy being a jerk and he's supposed to be the love interest in this there was no redeeming quality for that so I DNF for that one and so since I needed a little pick me up and I was kind of still in the romance mood, this was on my TBR for owned TBR. And I had just recently picked up an offer from a gentleman, which is book three in the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. So I decided to pick up this one. I loved Anthony's story. And I am super excited for Colin's story coming up and I know I said when I did my series video that I would not be continuing on in this series until I got the Netflix tie-in covers but I just couldn't wait. I needed something that I knew that I would love and so that is why I picked up this book. I knew that I would love it. And I wanted to read this one before I moved on to the fourth one, which is Colin and Penelope's story. So this one, we follow Benedict. Benedict is the second oldest son in the Bridgerton family. And he is only known as that. He's number two or a Bridgerton. Nobody knows his name. And he is extremely frustrated by this. And in this one, his mother is throwing a ball 
a very last hurrah before Anthony and Kate take over the Bridgerton house and Mrs. Bridgerton moves into a different house. And so she throws this masquerade ball and Sophie, who is the bastard daughter of an earl, goes to this ball and meets Benedict. They have this one magical night, a couple of hours. He doesn't know who she is. She knows who he is because um, it's very easy to pick out a Bridgerton because of their looks. And there's only three boys that are out in society. One's married and then it's just Colin or Benedict. And Sophie meets him and they have this really, really great connection. And I thought immediately, yes, this one's a little bit like insta lust, but nothing's really acted upon. And then two years pass and they meet up again. I don't want to give too much away. This one is definitely, I have seen it portrayed as a Cinderella retelling. It is definitely there most definitely you have that Cinderella retelling. And I liked the way that Julia Quinn wrote this one. However, there were certain things that I kind of, I didn't really like, but overall I trusted the process and I gave this one four stars. I absolutely love Benedict. This is not the Benedict that I've seen in the show. This is definitely the Benedict that you see in the books. And I understand why people don't love Benedict, but I absolutely love Benedict in the shows. So I'm interested to see how they do his story, but this one was definitely what I needed at the time. I gave it four stars. I absolutely loved it. I loved the end. I loved Mrs. Bridgerton in this one. I love Violet Bridgerton in this book. I absolutely love her overall, but I loved her in this book. She is a bad ass mom in this book for her time. She's a badass mom. And I loved every second of this one. Following the one only one left, I needed another audiobook. And so I decided to listen to Flawless by Elsie Silver and I was very hesitant going into this one because of the hype. I had heard the hype through this book and I was definitely very very nervous going into this one. Um, this one was not on my TBR at all but I did need another audiobook and I couldn't really find one that I wanted to listen to. So I decided to listen to this one. This one is the very first in the Chestnut Hills series. And let me tell you, it's worth the hype. We follow Rhett in summer. Rhett is a professional bull rider and he is makes a very questionable choice with some of his words and actions in the very beginning of this book. And he is basically given a babysitter through his agent who is Summer's dad and that babysitter is Summer. Summer is not happy about this, Rhett is not happy about this, but Summer's dad is like, this is what's gonna happen. You keep your hands off my daughter. You keep little Rhett in your pants. Doesn't matter who it is, but you keep him in your pants. And things progress. You know that things are gonna progress because obviously it's a love story. I absolutely loved this one. I gave this one five stars. I kind of sat on this rating for a little bit because I wanted to be true to my feelings on it. I cried. This one is definitely kind of a little grumpy sunshine. It has a one bed trope. It's an age gap because he is considerably older than she is. It also has like that very much pining for your celebrity crush. Summer knew who Rhett was when she was younger, like a teenager, and she definitely had a crush on Rhett when she was younger. I love their relationship. Like I said, I cried. I love the family dynamics that we get in this one. When people talk about the Eatons and the family dynamic in this series, if you love a family dynamic, if you love those snarky brothers, um, 
cousins that are always hanging around this or friends of the family that are like family you will love this one this one is definitely wholesome it's got the steam i definitely thought it was going to be a little bit more steamier but compared to the next two books that i'm going to talk about that were romance or classified as romance this one definitely had some steam compared to those two books and i'm a little bitter about it i will be continuing on in this series and i cannot wait to read the second book which is about a single dad really looking forward to that one so while i was in mississippi i finished this book and i didn't want to read any of the romance that i had brought with me so i decided to go on my library and i decided to check out a book that was just available to me and the one that i decided to choose and read was is what lies in the woods by kate alice marshall this came out last year this is another thriller mystery book and i loved it this i believe is kate alice marshall's first adult mystery thriller i know she has a lot of teen mystery thrillers that people have really really liked but i believe this was her first adult mystery thriller so what happens in this one is we follow naomi who was tragically injured when she was 11 and her and her two other friends were in the woods naomi comes is the only one that is tragically injured she is stabbed several times and her friends go to get help in the end they end up finding the person that they believe was the culprit of this crime and they put him away because he is supposedly known for other murders around the area and he is put away well at his untimely passing in jail naomi and her two other friends are kind of thrust back together because one of those friends is olivia who is very mentally ill and unstable and so they all come back together and they try to help olivia and things just kind of progress from there i know that this one is kind of based off of a true crime i'm not sure which one that is i'm gonna try to find out so i can read that one now that i've read this one i did pick up on one of the twists which you know is what it is i ended up giving this one four stars i did also decide to check out everything else that my library had from kate alice marshall and we'll soon be going down that rabbit hole but anyways this is about what lies in the woods i really like this one again this is another mystery thriller who am i like seriously this is typically a romance disney channel and i am reading mystery thrillers that i said i swore i would never ever read this i love mysteries i love mystery but i swore up and down i would not do thrillers and here i am two in one month i don't know who i am but i have her most recent one put on hold through my library and i will be picking that one up as soon as it comes out i also have several of her other books just in case I want to go down that rabbit hole of thrillers and I feel like that's a good mix because I have a lot of romance in my house and fantasy but I don't have a lot of thrillers in my house the next book that I'm going to talk about I'm not going to give you too much because I have an entire vlog about me reading this book this is the lucky leap day by Anne marie walker this was on my tbr legacy for friends which is uh, a friends episode so if you're new to my channel i have a tbr legacy game on that game are friends spaces i absolutely love the friends series and i choose episodes with just whatever random episode i I'm in the mood for typically from one season currently I'm on season two and for this one I chose I think it's the one where Joey moves out and he goes and gets his own apartment so this one is kind of like that we have 
Kara and we have Finn and Finn moves in with Kara for certain reasons. Now, for steam level, if you're thinking about books and you're doing like the movie ratings, I would say this one is definitely closer like R, PG-13, PG-13 in the 80s. Um, this one is PG. All we have is kissing. And this one is classified as a romance. For all the research that this author did on you know, Leap Day in Ireland, Irish history, she really dropped the ball on the romance. Like she could have thrown in like one or two steamy scenes and I would have given this like four stars and I would have been raving about it. But it was, it was three stars. I, there's nothing fantastic about it. There's nothing bad about it. I liked it. But overall, I just, I didn't jive with any of it and I will not be picking up anything else from this author unfortunately but if you want to hear my more thoughts on this one you can go check out my vlog where I read this one on leap day and I also watch leap year in that vlog and finally for the last book that I just finished in March but it was on my February TBR and that is The Stand-In. This is the book that I picked, pulled from my challenge cup and this also went in for my event which was a standalone and this is a standalone. Now while I was reading this I was super excited about this one. If you saw my TBR I was extremely excited for this one but it took me all month to get to this one because I didn't want to read it in the mindset of I don't want to read a romance and I put this one off so long because I was like I don't want to read this one when I'm not in a good headspace and I finally picked it up after I read this one because I was like or actually I I picked it up after I finished What Lies in the Woods because I'm like, okay, I got my little thriller moment in. I can pick up something else. So I picked this one up. This is kind of like a prince and a pauper type of deal. So we have, we meet Gracie. And in the very beginning of this book, Gracie is dealing with her very inappropriate boss. And she goes she's taking a sick day and she's trying to figure out what she's going to do with this boss and so she goes to this coffee shop and in this coffee shop she gets mistaken for a celebrity who is um Wei Fang Li and Fang Li is a very popular Chinese actress paparazzi takes a picture of her and she gets mistaken for Fang Li and then Fang Li finds her and they kind of go through the motions of asking Gracie to kind of be her body double because currently Fang Li is in a production of a play and she's very, very burnt out. And she just wants Gracie to be there for events that are outside of the production. So going out and being seen in public, going out to dinners or any other events that are at night that don't necessarily have any involvement with somebody that knows Fong Lee well. And she gets paid in an exorbitant amount of money. The only problem is Sam, who is Fong Lee's like other half, but they're not together. Now that I've rabbled around on this one, there is zero seam in this one. Where this one is PG, this one is PG-13, and we get kissing and we get a fade to black. However, the reason that I gave this one five stars is because it gave me the feels between Gracie and Sam. It was a very slow burn. It was like an enemy, like they hated each other. They got off on the wrong foot. They were very much, nope, this isn't going to work. Sam hated every single minute of it. And he was like, nope, this isn't going to work. This is going to blow up in our faces. This is not going to work. And the other thing is, is I saw a twist in here close to the end. 
but I absolutely loved the ending. I loved the ending. I loved how it wrapped up and I may or may not pick up more from Lily Chu, but I'm definitely super excited that I loved this one and I gave it five stars because it made me cry. I teared up. I completed my February TBR. Now the only one that I did not read or actually I did just DNF it was my audiobook or ebook and that was The Doctor. This was also my bestie pick and I just DNF'd this one last night. I gave it 20% and I just could not get past the ick factor for me. And that ick factor is one night stands where nobody knows anybody's name. I'm sorry, I'm a little old fashioned. Number two is your ex-husband's brother. I just, no, not for me. But I DNF'd that one. That's what I read in February. I don't know why this one's on here. No, it could just go away. So, not too shabby, if I do say so for myself. So for me, that's a really great reading month. I could not be upset about that. But I'm gonna wrap this one up, and if you've read any of these, please let me know. And if you wanna check out any of my other videos, they're linked around and I will see you in the next one. I'm sorry that was super awkward, but you know what? I'm in a very awkward mood today. Maybe it's the red hair. New month, new hair. We're, we're gonna roll with it, but that's 